Welcome back to PR After Hours. I'm your host, Alex Greenwood, bringing you your weekly cocktail of PR and marketing tips that will help you and your business. Stick around. We'll get started right after these messages. Hello, listeners. It's me, Alex, from PR After Hours. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. And I wanted to talk to you just for a moment about the way I get this show right into your earbuds every week. It's because I use Anchor FM. Now, I've told you previously that I've been podcasting since 2006, back when we used stone knives and bear skins and a couple of Dixie cups and string. Anchor FM has really, really streamlined this and made it simpler for people who don't know the first thing about setting up a podcast or don't have you know time to learn all the pro tools and stuff because it's all right here first thing it's important to know is it's free there are certain tools that will allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer anchor will then distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on spotify apple podcasts and many more that's huge distribution is a big pain in the butt to be honest with you so it's really great anchor fm can do that for you and you're not paying hosting fees that adds up every month it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place so download the free anchor app or go to anchor fm to get started and be sure to join me in the virtual cocktail lounge on pr after hours This is Julie Cortez, freelance rock star, coming at you. You are listening to PR After Hours. You know, it's been said that I have a nose for news, but I also have a nose. And I'm also bedeviled by allergies and all sorts of things as I get older. And that's why I'm very excited to have Dr. Hannah Solomon here with us today. She has been on a mission to educate people on the benefits of nasal washing for more than three decades. Her enthusiasm for patient empowerment and reduction of medication use, whoop whoop, has become the core of Be Well Health. Dr. Hannah's Nasal Pure Nasal Wash System is known as the most comfortable nose wash in the world. The company's mission is first do no harm, which is embodied in everything it does and stands for Nasopure is made in the USA. It's symbol by adults and dis- with uh, disabilities is made with BPA free recyclable material and sold in supermarkets, pharmacies online and in over 25 countries. Dr. Hanna, thanks for joining us here in the virtual lounge. Thank you for having me. What a great opportunity, especially because you have nose issues. Well, it, besides the way it looks, there there are others. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, your nose is functioning perfectly as it's holding your glasses up at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yeah, that's true. Because imagine my eyes started going when I was 40. So if I didn't have this nose, I'd be in real trouble. Uh, (laughs) Dr. Hanna, I'd love to ask you, uh, again, as an allergy sufferer, and this really hit me hard when I got into my 40s. I'm in my early 50s now, but in my 40s, after a life of not much problem at all, it just seems like being outdoors, which I love to do. I'm a hiker and a runner. I love it. It just seems to get worse and worse and worse. And it got to a point where if I didn't take a couple of, uh, you know, Claritin a day or some Zyrtec, I just couldn't even go outside. So I'm just praying that you're going to tell me today that you've got something that can help. What I have cannot make you younger or more beautiful or richer. But what I do have is some information that would empower you so that you can make a choice Do you want to put a pharmaceutical to hide your symptoms or do you want to consider looking at why you're having those symptoms and how to reduce that natural body reaction to extra debris and dirt and pollution and the list goes on. So let me start by saying as a first hippie, you're maybe a little young, but as a hippie who lived on a spiritual commune in the 70s for a few years, one day I woke up and realized the only way to really change the world would be to empower myself. And so I fast forward, single mom, two kids, no college. 10 years later, uh, I was a board certified pediatrician, but I still had the common sense Um, And I didn't lose it through my education. And one of my mentors was a pediatric ears, nose and throat doctor. And he said, Hannah, if I could get everyone to wash their nose, 
I would never have to do surgery again. This is from a surgeon. I heeded his advice. As a pediatrician, every kid that had a problem, most of them started in the nose. Asthma, sinus, ear, snoring, coughing, I'll go down the list. And I wasn't willing to treat my patients as though they were not my children. And I would not give my children a drug as a first line. So let me give you some information and your listeners. We humans breathe 10,000 liters a day through our nose. Our nose function is to humidify, filter, and warm the air we breathe. Why does it do that? It protects our lungs. We also make a pint to a quart of mucus per day. So I would argue with Americans, because actually nose washing is actually very popular in other countries, but we Americans who are used to just popping a pill for ailments, we are now on a trajectory, hopefully, to learn to appreciate natural and preventative approaches. So I had to figure out how am I going to, the nose is dirty. Seems to me the first step is cleaning it. But how do I get a two-year-old to clean it? Uh, rule number one, don't ask a two-year-old patient to do something that I myself wouldn't do. I couldn't use the neti pot. And for those listeners who are not familiar with the neti, the neti is like a 4,000 year old teapot looking device. Buddhist monks used it for centuries to um, rinse their nasal passages for meditation. In about 2007, Dr. Oz and Oprah introduced the neti to the Americans. Um, and then all of a sudden I wasn't such a stupid doctor. Um, <laughs> The neti was something I could not use, and we could talk about that later if you'd like, sure. but um, I developed a product that I could use, and I'm a big water wimp, and all my two-year-old patients would love it the first time, and because my patients accepted it so well, I decided to go to market and uh, patent the bottle and sell it. Nasopure is different because it flushes down along, oh, I'm, we're on audio. The <laughs> flushing is pointing to the back of the neck, not mm -hmm. upward. And when you wash with devices that introduce solution upward, to me, it doesn't make sense because I just told you about all the debris collected in the nose. Yeah. Why would want to push it into a sinus cavity? That doesn't make common sense to me. And then you're hoping it comes out. Nasopure is different because it flushes along the nasal floor. It avoids the drowning, I'm choking, or somebody just pushed yeah. me in the swimming pool feeling. Doesn't have yeah. that. And as it makes a U-turn, I believe it gently encourages the natural drainage from the sinuses. Those are all words, but in my book, I've written a book, Clearing the Air One Nose at a Time. It's basically an <laughs> owner's manual for the nose. Mm -hmm. I describe all the different systems and all the different solutions. And, and in the back of the book, there are am amazing references that show, and stop me anytime if I'm talking too long. Sure. No, you're good. That show that if you use a hypertonic, which is a salty solution of a nose wash, mm -hmm. you remove, as compared to saline, you remove 80% of the allergens. What does that mean? Oh. You, you have 80% less symptoms, right? You use 80%, just wash out 80% of the allergens. It shrinks the swollen membranes. So you don't need the Dimatac or Sudafed. Mm -hmm. It improves the filtering by 17%. It augments healing of any bloody tissues. Uh -huh. It thins the thick, sticky secretions and makes it watery and drippy instead of stuck. And the yeah. last thing is it makes an environment uninhabitable 
for bacteria and viruses to grow. Now, I wonder if people were wondering about that very thing as you were speaking, because I was. There are studies, many studies. One that comes to mind that's just a quick to reference. Um, it's not a huge study, but it supports what I have seen for 30 years clinically. Um, and that is there was a group of healthy college students in San Francisco. Half mm -hmm. of them were given nose washes for a flu and cold season winter, and the other half were told to live normally. Well, surprise, the folks that wash their nose develop cold and flu m much less. Another study looking at uh, thousands of Czechoslovakian children during a particular allergy season and similar, split the group in two, half used their regular allergy medicine and they checked on weight and attendance in school and over the counter meds that are used and the folks that wash their nose. The folks that wash their nose, about 80% didn't use the medications, didn't lose as much school, certainly didn't get infected. Yeah. Nasal washing has been shown in many, many situations that it helps and there's no harm when it's done correctly. So I would beg for you to consider if you have a muddy cut, don't you want to wash it before you put the antibiotic or the steroid on it? True. You don't yes. have to go to med school to learn that. <laughs> Dr. Hanna, I, I am a, let me back up here. I'm a former neti pot user, but I, I did really bridle at that feeling like I was drowning and it's a mess and all this. Now I'm, I'm not, afraid to do do things like that to feel better and it i think it did help but i think the problem for me the hurdle was it was just such a chore and an ordeal and it was messy and it and, and, and the uncomfortable and i don't know i've not used nasopure and, and by the way i'm not endorsing nasopure i'm just excited to learn about it here folks but i'm just curious is, is that something that's a little different with the way you do it so forever doctors have been giving patients here make this recipe at home what we all know is, is patients are humans. And uh, we often say, thank you, but we're not always very compliant. Well, you gotta go to this store and get that. And then you gotta do this. And, and every doctor has their own opinion. What I, my goal was, was to make it easy and comfortable for a two-year-old. And forgive me if I'm being politically incorrect, but I have a lot of gray hair and for men. I wanted it to be comfortable enough for it to be reused on a regular basis. That was my goal. And so my salt packets, in my humble opinion, are the perfect mix of buffering so it doesn't burn. My instructions tell you how to start with a mild solution and then work your way up. Um, Well, very cool. So, it's, yeah. So you're saying is that yeah, you think you've you well, you've got a better you've got a better mousetrap. That's that's great. Um, I, I think I'd like to try that because also everybody in my family. Well, my, not my daughter. My my wife is suffers from allergies as badly as I do. In fact, she gets a lot of sinus infections. And I have to. I, I think one time a doctor said just the way your sinuses were constructed, she just was one of those lucky ones where things kind of seem to get trapped in there more than other people. Hence the infections. I don't know what that means, but it, would you say for people who are chronic sinus infection sufferers, they should really get into trying to use something like nasopure? Well, let's see. Risk benefit. Right. What's the risk in washing your nose if you do it correctly? Well, you're risking seeing the doctor less often. You're risking taking less meds. Um, you're risking paying about, I don't know, uh, $20 every three months or six months. I don't know, um, 20 cents a day to wash your nose. Um, the risk of not washing and the risk of having chronic and recurrent sinus infections will lead to overuse and abuse of antibiotics, uh, alert, allergy to antibiotics, side effects to the antibiotics and biofilm that's developed when chronic sinus sufferers have been giving antibiotics and then it's changing all of the biofilm and the bug balance. Um, and then the next step 
is surgery. So when you wash the nose, you are washing the highway intersection of the four sets of sinuses. And as I said, we make a pint to a quart of mucus a day. Guess what? When you're allergic, that mucus gets thicker and stickier and it tends to hang. And then it's common sense, right? The, we right. need a rotor rooter kind of thing. I believe if you clean the doorway to the opening, things drain naturally. I'm all for that. It, I'm all for that. I like, I like that. Hmm. The exceptions is if somebody uh. has had surgery, I am only discussing generally normal uh, anatomy of the head and the sure. ears and the eyes. If there's major surgery, they're welcome to call me, right? Because I, I can't say how things are made. Um, right. Anybody could call me anytime if they want to talk about their nose. Um, so, but the <laughs> exception is if you've had major surgery, you could, you should never use NasoPure if you're not able to protect your own airway, like uh. somebody is forcing you to do it, or you've had a stroke, or you have cerebral palsy. In those situations, you would never do it to someone or force somebody to do it. It's got to feel sure. good. And I could tell you this, when folks do it and they try it, they wind up doing it often, like daily to keep things clean. Or if they're already congested, they do it twice a day. If you're infected, you do it three to four times a day. And there's an 80% chance you will not need the antibiotic. This is great. I, I you've, you've, of course, read my mind. This was the next question I was going to ask. Let's just say it's me. Okay, I'm getting ready to cruise right into seasonal allergy season for me. And this is where, Dr. Hanna, where my eyes water. Um, I sneeze a lot. I'm miserable. I just don't feel good. It, I just feel yucky. Okay, let's just, here, that's a scientific term, I'm sure. Yucky. And that goes on for me all the way until the first or second freeze. Um, and I've got an allergist who's never once recommended nasal washing. She's put me on stuff. They recommend shots. They recommend nasal steroids. They recommend antihistamines. There and you go. You get, and if you get infected, then the antibiotic. And if you get three infections and they send you to the ears, nose and throat surgeon for surgery. Have you been peeking at my medical records again, Dr. Hanna? I mean, really? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Okay, I shouldn't so, post those. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, so someone like you, based on what you've mm -hmm. told me, you already have an underlying congestion. Do you mm -hmm. snore? I, I, not since I lost some weight, but I used to. Yeah, quite a bit. So you already have a little bit of a congestion. And when you go into the season and you're not eating really good foods, we haven't even yeah. talked about that. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. in general, I've never met a person who had a single allergy. So I'm going to propose to you that your body is already overloaded because you have some symptoms. And as you are exposed, it tips you over the edge. Your nose is sneezing to get the gunk out. That's the reflex. The yeah. reason your eyes are watering is either the pollen is going directly to your eye or when you're breathing, pollen goes up the lacrimal duct and in your eye, which is why nose washing can sometimes help with eye allergies. Ooh. If you'd like, I can share with you my uh, lecture to the California osteopathic family physician group where I lectured about 500 doctors on nasal irrigation. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't talk about nasal if you're just lectures doctors about risk benefit and all the issues. And so that your listeners can read it for themselves. That'd be great. Yeah. We could put a link in the, in the notes or it, unless it's available on your website, which we're going to link to. I think it is. That's where we'll have to talk to Val, but uh, okay. just for those right. who are interested in learning more. So Very my good. Yeah, well, does that make sense? So you're, you were almost at the tipping point and you go into your allergy season and that just overloads you. Right. And so how can washing be harmful? 
Yeah, as I said in the introduction, you're talking about do no harm, the physician's credo anyway. You're doing no harm. So, and, and that's the thing I keep thinking as I come back to everything you're saying is, well, okay, what, what could it hurt? It's not like you're taking a drug. You're not cutting into yourself. You're just rinsing out a nasal passage effectively um, with a solution that you believe is 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 premium, which is great. So let me ask you this. So let me just, I, I, I hate making it about me, but I'm the only guy who's here who can ask you this question about uh, allergies. So I'll just do it. So I am an outdoors guy. I hike constantly. I hike throughout the winter. Great. I love the winter hiking simply because there weren't as many allergens to deal with, but I'm allergic to a lot of trees and things are starting to bloom. So let me ask you, if I have nasopure, and my eyes are watering. I understand I'm not rinsing my eyes, but there, there's probably, as you said, a benefit to rinsing the nasal with the eyes. Okay. Would you say to me, Alex, okay, dude, go out, do your half marathon training, go do your hiking, do all that. When you get home, then rinse it out. Or do you say rinse it out before you go to bed? Or, or do you do it every day, no matter what you've done during the day physically? Please just give me an idea what you recommend. Okay. First, I want to go back to the solution. My salt mix. May I? Please. Not, it is a, it's the exact recipe that my mentor had been using. He had written hundreds of studies. I trusted him. It's been used in the operating room for 40 years or more. Mm -hmm. That okay. is my recipe. And the Very reason good. that's important is it allows the user to use a lot more salt but it has the most buffering of any other on the market. And that's important because for you, mm. when you, the first time you use NasoPure, you're gonna practice using the technique, you're gonna follow my instructions with a mild solution. Okay. It's only as salty as your body. It's simply washing a muddy cut with only water. Mm -hmm. When you feel comfortable with your technique, you're going to go to the stronger solution and the instructions tell you how that solution is the solution that does all the things I told you about removes 80% of the allergen shrinks. Normal. Okay. The way to do that is if you're perfect, I would suggest once a day. If you have any symptoms like now, I'd suggest when you wake up, and as soon as you get back from your hike, if you have more symptoms because you're at a higher tipping point and you need it more, you could certainly do it three times a day. The only time you do it four times a day is if you actually have an infection. And I spend half my days on the phone talking to folks about their particular, you know, the instructions is, um, it's rewritten every year, but it's written for, I hate to say it, the masses, most people. Sure. But every sure. person has unique situations, so they could always call or email. I love that. Well, let's, in our closing moments, I, 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 I'm, I'm intrigued and interested. I'm going to, we'll have links in the show notes so people can look and buy if they would like. I want to ask you, though, when did this hit the market? Let's let's. I've got to put on the marketing and PR hat for a minute here, Dr. Hanna. When did it hit the market, and how have you? How are you marketing it to people besides appearing on great shows like mine? It first appeared in 07, approximately. Although I began offering it to my patients in 2001, okay. so 07 officially. I start. I'm a very small company. I started in my basement. Uh -huh. My current president, who's my son, when he was in junior high, was helping me assemble. When we outgrew the basement, we had um, a sheltered workshop for disabled adults about two miles from my home. I marketed it by going to every doctor's clinic in my town, going to every store in my town. Then I went to St. Louis and Kansas City and knocked on the door of the Whole Food. Back then it was before Amazon owned it. And I did it one by one and three by three and slowly grew and um, did a lot of expos where natural product shows. I personally, I'm much more focused on educating and mm -hmm. writing. And then, you know, my team does a little of the tech stuff like on the web that is above my pay grade and 
there's no, I haven't had any magic. It's just one nose at a time. <laughs> I do let, have, about, get... I do have about three PhDs in stupid business mistakes. I was going to ask you, though, is there, if you don't mind, if you can conjure one, if you don't mind, I love to ask entrepreneurs this question. What, what, and you said stupid, so I'll, I'll say it too. What's the stupid mistake you made when you tried to roll this out? Or, or what's the big mistake you've made that you've learned the most from, if you don't mind sharing? Well, let me, let me just say the mistake that was the first big, oh my gosh, I trusted the expert. Hmm. And that is um, patenting, protecting intellectual property for my bottle. Right. And they encouraged me to only get a design patent, which hmm. was the least. And um, they did not inform me about international patents at the same time. And if you didn't apply within a certain number of months, it was out of the question but I was lucky and, and actually got a utility patent in 2014. And yeah. I have a new cap design that I hope to be able to present at some point. And I have other products, but what I've learned is nobody knows my heart better than me. That's fantastic. And I think that's a lesson for all of you entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, and, and it's a lesson for marketers and PR as well. When you're working with solopreneurs and entrepreneurs like Dr. Hanna is to, is to really make sure we check all those boxes and we also listen to them. Um, it, there is a syndrome that not even a doctor can cure and that is expertitis. You walk in and you know, I'm the expert. And by the way, doctors can be this way too. Um, we're, right? Oh, she's, she's, she's chomping at the bit to say something about that. That is the problem. Okay. I think that the medical schools are really doing a disservice because they are teaching doctors, even in my day, teaching, and, and even as of today, except for the naturopathic schools, where thank God I was offered, um, I've lectured, but the standard medical schools are not teaching washing something that's dirty. The, the typical medical student uh, schools do not teach a doctor how to give a shot or to draw blood very well. Hmm. That's why nurses do it so much better. There's lots of issues, but my angst with the medical community is not even considering washing. It's a little bit like a dentist never introducing a toothbrush, but they really want you to come in for those caps. <laughs> Dr. Hanna, that's beautiful. She is the inventor of Nasopure, and this is for allergies, cold, flu, sinusitis, rhinitis, nasal congestion, sinus pressure, post-nasal drip, runny nose. All of these things can be addressed with this product. There's going to be a link in the show notes. I want you all to check it out. I am thrilled to have you. You're you're an unusual guest for us, and, and I'll tell you why you're unusual. Because, well, one, you're, you're from Missouri, so you're a neighbor of mine, basically. I think you may very well be our first physician on the show after after a year and a half. So thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Anna. My pleasure. And I'm a human before I'm a physician. You got it, folks. Check the show notes for more about Nasopure. Dr. Hanna, we'll see you on down the road. Hopefully I can report to you after I use this that uh, I'm not sneezing so darn much. You read my mind. Please contact me personally if you have any questions about your nose. Oh, you know what that means? Looks like it's last call here at your virtual lounge for PR news views and interviews. Don't forget, you can ask me a question anytime. You can do it through our Twitter account, which is at ours PR. Or even better, you can send me a message vocally. I would love to hear your voice and I'll answer it on the show. There's a link in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up through Anchor FM. It's free. Doesn't take long and you record your message, I get the message, I will play your audio, just give me your first name and the city you live in, and then I will answer the question to the best of my ability right here on the show. Don't forget to, if you're enjoying this podcast, you can support it and help increase the frequency and value of the show. Just consider being a sponsor for your brand or your agency or just yourself because you're like, I like this show. 
or just drop a few coins in the virtual tip jar. Either way, there's links in the show notes. Please check that out. All of that, of course, being in the show notes where you're listening right now or at PRAfterHours.com. I see that they're turning up the lights. Last call is over, and I've got to clean up this virtual lounge. And until next time, I'm Alex Greenwood, and you've been listening to PR After Hours on Anchor FM.